Welcome, 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 Miracle Makers. Turn up the sound. Give us a thumbs up. You're in for the profound today. We are so excited that you're here joining us on Facebook Live, on UBN, in Sunset Gower Studios. I am Dr. Sarah Larson, your Miracle Maker host. I've got in studio my amazing, cute hubby. Hi, baby. Okay, I'll take that. Oh, I would say I, I rugged. Forget. You could say rugged, <laughs> um, chiseled. Chiseled, <laughs> divine, handsome. You know what? You brought to my awareness that uh-huh. when I say cute, uh-huh. it's condescending sometimes mm-hmm. to people. And it's really, really interesting. Since you've shared that with me, I'm really mindful of how people receive my words. Dear miracle makers, mm. the words that you're sharing are landing on others. And if you want want to have the most amazing relationships, think about choosing your words as how they land for others, not necessarily what they mean for you. And if you say a word and someone gets a little look on their face like, what do you mean by that? Go in and use your spirit to explain what you mean by that word. So by cute baby, I mean cool well okay good there you go that's the kind of cute i am yeah. yes yeah. you are ultra see cool and <laughs> like um i tend to only use the word cute with people that i feel are larger than life for myself it's this energy of wow rolling it up all into one so we, we, we go further we go with the you i was thinking like underwear model cute underwear model yeah, cute yeah, to my you. husband for sure T i, I is, don't yeah. usually <laughs> use that word cute and refer to that with other people i'm just saying <laughs> Miracle Makers, we have such an amazing show for you. This is one that you want to share right now. We've got uh, on the line with us via Skype, one of the most extraordinary human beings in the Los Angeles area. When I met her, uh, there was such a love for her. She had just written one of her books and I was at an event, a mutual friend of ours, Connie Costa, had invited both of us as her guests to this event. Marcy Cole was there. And by the time she was sharing her stories, I was in tears. Mm. Because she, uh, as I have gone on to learn, for after that initial meeting, she worked for Oprah as an intern. She has a love for the community that's huge. And so she's gone around building communities. And she takes great pains, I would say, or great joy, great establishment in creating service to others. And when you follow her on Facebook, you see the cutest videos of her mom and dad that have been married (laughs) forever. (laughs) Welcome, Marcy Cole. Uh, we've got this in-studio audience that is <laughs> recorded from a long time ago that gets to Uh-oh. share. <laughs> you guys have thought of everything. Thank you so much. It's a delight to be with you. I wish we were three-dimensional form, but this is the next best thing, right? It's the yes. next best thing. And it's so great because we can feel through your voice, through the beauty that you're sharing, this grounded you're in a new level of awareness is what i'm experiencing you as like at the highest level that you've ever been you've done so many things from creating communities from working in media from being a doctor phd doctor in therapy working to help those that are in holistic practices build their own practice in your community. You have elegant ways that you serve our communities. There's so much I could say about you, but I want you to say what you would want our miracle makers to know about you. Oh, well, first of all, thank you, Dr. Sarah. Right back at you, girl. You, you, you know, you have such a transcendent, beautiful, loving energy that feels like you see into everyone's heart. And, um, I appreciate you, holding that space for me and feeling like 
I felt known and seen and held and, and loved from the minute we said hello. So thank you for all that you're doing for all of us in creating this beautiful platform. Um, you know, what I would say is that um, I actually spoke about this recently about, you know, I, I for one have my hands in lots of pots. There's a lot of people, particularly in Los Angeles, that do. Um, and I used to split off these, I used to kind of compartmentalize the different parts of my life, my holistic psychotherapy practice, my community gatherings, you know, events that integrate um, network working and then having a, a well-known thought leader come and speak about self-development, professional development, and the nonprofit called Simama, which promotes the connection between people without kids and kids in need. I used to separate all this stuff out in my head and even the way I spoke about it. And it literally dawned on me just a few years ago that actually everything that we're doing is an expression of who we are. So everything's connected. And it all of a sudden came together and gelled. It's like it's all about connectivity. You know, mir what's a miracle? Miracle, I love the Einstein quote about we can live our lives one of two ways to think that nothing's a miracle or everything's a miracle. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> the idea of, of connectivity, so... You know, you. I'm sure you can relate to this, you know, on your end. You, when you're working one-on-one -on -one with somebody, you're helping them connect with themselves in the deepest layers of, of who they really are. When you're helping families or couples how to, how to bridge whatever is in the way of direct communication and access to their hearts together. And in community, the same thing. It's, connect, it's connecting. It's holding a space where people can connect with one another and see what were all the beautiful miracles that are that you know unfold from there, and then of course the nonprofit, the the, the uh, again holding an open uh, forum and territory energetically for people without children to connect in one way or the other with children in need. So, in the end, you know we all can look at our lives. That was my way of connecting all the dots. But really, everyone, if you really stop and reflect, truly everything is connected and part of the same story of the unfolding of your life and, and the and the for the fabric of your heart mm. for the fabric of your heart that connection of your life miracle makers one of the things that i heard marcy cole say is she's been walking her path and taking herself to mastery at each of the different areas that she had compartmentalized and at one point when she hit a certain point and who she was in each of those areas, she realized it's all connected. And so as a holistic therapist, as a community leader, as someone who supports, and I've spoken at um, your community event, I was so honored. It was such a yes. highlight, just really, really beautiful. Yes. Such a gift. You really brought it down to it's all connected. And you found that common connection within yourself. You found the seed that made everything that you took to the highest level make sense and connected. Mm -hmm. You knew who you were and therefore you knew how everything in your life fit together from that. Miracle Makers and Greg, what would you share? Well, you know, what's coming up for me as you're talking is, and I, I totally understand the, the value of connecting and connection and yet it seems like there's challenges today in doing that. There's opportunities for more connection through Facebook and social media and stuff and YouTube and all that stuff. But there's a, obviously there's a lot of disconnection because we just heard on the car right over here that the United Nations really support. There's more people committing suicide every year than all people in, over the world dying of natural disasters or wars combined. So there's like this huge disconnection also. Mm -hmm. So well, yeah. and I and then it's different for men and women. I I, I you know I attended the uh, epic 2017 day, and there's all these women there, and they're all connecting, and they're all. And then I'm a guy like, oh my god, all this connecting. I don't know if I can do all this connecting. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so there's challenges for both men and women. But that's yeah. what I would if you could like just briefly talk about what you know. There's you can immediately recognize the value of connection and how that helps business and families and communities and churches. But what's keeping us from connecting? What's what's the challenges with that? Yeah, uh, Greg, I'm so glad you went there because yes. it's the polarization of everything, right? There's light and there's dark. Uh, there's peace and there's war. And and the other side of connectivity is disconnection. And I, I believe that the source 
of of all what they call mental illness, the source of of war and and conflict globally, um, the source of of family strife and dysfunction, all that is late is is actually rooted in disconnection and disconnection from our heart disconnection from each other disconnection from source and so when we find ourselves in that place and by the way we all do Mm. um no matter who we are i actually think that a lot of the those of us in the helping healing professions are really good at healing but sometimes not so good at feeling and Mm. you we're so we're so conditioned to be holding space for others and focusing on others that we can disconnect from ourselves you know the healer heal thyself syndrome so it can happen to all of us we can all go in and out of in, in our, our sense of connection i think the way back right is that sort of uh, obser- observing eye that mindful attunement to saying i feel terrible i feel hopeless i feel scared, I feel alone. These are the signals that we have disconnected from the deepest layers of our heart, which is 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 rooted in the divine. And no matter what's going on around us, when we drop in, you know, when we really learn how to drop in and connect with, with ourselves, it there's so, sort of like everything's okay in some way. And even if there's pain and we can access it and and, and, and acknowledge it and access it and express it, and release it, we come back, everything's okay. When we feel disconnected from someone we love, or even someone, you know, even someone in the workplace, or in, you know, in our family or friends, if we can come back in, in a place with the intention to connect and understand without judgment, and, and just hear each other, and get to more common ground, understanding, and um, a greater awareness. Um, And then, of course, if we if we allow ourselves to connect with the divine, what what does that mean? You know, I, we're not talking about religiosity. I'm talking about what we all know to be true, which is that we're not alone, and that we're more than we can see, touch, touch and feel. And and actually, Kabbalah has a beautiful paradigm with couples. They say when you're just dealing this way, back and forth, and just focused on the back and forth of two people, eventually there will probably be projection, boredom, judgment, disconnection. But if you always add the the idea of the triangle where you're one and you're the other and you're both connected to the divine, that there's something greater in everything and every circumstance, all of a sudden we can, again, get rid of the cobwebs and the things that disconnect us and get back to the bigger picture, um, which is, again, all in divine order. So whether... Whatever that is to somebody, the God of your understanding, the, your source, your the universe, your higher self, it's whatever that is. such a great answer, mm. Marcy. Really, really beautiful. And I, I bring in another layer to this, which I think is really, really important. I love that you've brought in yeah. the, the masculine and the feminine energies connected to a higher force, that triangle we often disconnect, I believe, through judgment. Mm, wow. We disconnect because we're judging ourselves or we're judging the moment or we're judging so uh, in, in that experience. Rather than feeling, we're in a place of being in the head or yeah. in comparison or yes. not completely with the other person. We've we've decided they should have been something else or we should have been something else in that moment. And when you bring in, like you said, Marcy, that third I, so to speak, a third, the divinity or the purpose, Greg and I have a purpose to our relationship. Mm-hmm. It's we have several of them that we've labeled over time. Be mm-hmm. strong to be useful. Be the hero. Be strong enough to carry more than one. Oh, um, lately, we've been creating the best content for the least amount of money to reach the the most people. Mm-hmm. We're becoming more resourceful. And yes, we were for me especially. I was a healer. 
And I was so disconnected for mm-hmm. most of my life until I met Greg. Mm-hmm. And there was a force larger than myself that I trained myself to listen to mm-hmm. that, that allowed me to stay connected to Greg, even though my self-judgment and my past biology kept trying to knock me out of the relationship. Mm. My fears, my guilt, my shame, my Mm. inability to really feel for myself. And that, that would, but we early on in our relationship established that we would do some kind of work together every year. We Mm. would go to, we would learn and grow in the same direction. And mm. so early on we took within the first, we Greg spoke at Institute of Noetic Sciences and we went okay. to an agents convention where we met Agape and we met um, all of these beautiful spiritual leaders and teachers. And that became our first, like within the t- first two months that we met, That was a direction that we started to learn in and grow from. And -hmm. then year after year, we learned to judge ourselves and each other less. Mm -hmm. And whoever you're with, whichever person, miracle maker, whoever is in the environment with you, um, it can either be informing you or it can be affecting you. And this goes back to Kabbalah. I'm, I'm a student and I, of, and I love this ancient wisdom, Eastern philosophy, but it comes back to it's, if it's informing us, we have power over it. If it's affecting us, then we have to do our work. And Marcy, I would love for you to talk about this, which is the energy of projection, the energy of shadow, that Mm. energy, those other selves that come up and, and because in your therapy, in your practice, so much of that is something that you have to, you know, a very good therapist, a very good psychic, a very, very good healer, a very good doctor has to be able to recognize This is the light. This is the shadow. And uh, gently bring the other person with joy and happiness to see their own shadow, their own darkness, Mm -hmm. that energy, and to bring it from the space through the lens of this is part of their light. Yes. Yes. No question. Um, Yeah. You know, so projection right, is an unconscious defense where we give something away that that we're really feeling inside. So if it's like, I'm not really cool with me, I might say, Dr. Sarah, I don't like you, or why don't you like me? And you're like, what? What are you talking about? Um, Mm -hmm. And usually, going back to connection, it's usually from a place of disconnection. When I'm not connected to my feelings and my resolution of my feelings, it, 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 whatever, you know, is, you know, that what we resist persists, whatever's painful, we sometimes consciously or unconsciously just give it away. Um, And of course, that's part of the shadow effect. You know, if we, when we learn to connect with our truth, whatever, whatever that is, whatever it is, all the yucky feelings that we don't want to acknowledge, we just, uh, just allow ourselves, if we stay, if we allow ourselves to be with it, it's going to move through us. But if we don't, it is a shadow. It stays behind us, right? But if we bring it in, all of a sudden it's, it's integrated into the whole of who we are as a human being and being a full expression of ourselves as a human being, we can connect to the light and we can connect compassionately with what it feels like when we get knocked down, when we disconnect, when we're in our kind of our head and what that does, that spinning and judgment and what it does when we're in our ego and we give all of our power away to the other to impact how we feel about ourselves. Um, And so, but, but all of a sudden there's no shadow when we just bring it in. We just go, here's the light, and here's the yucky stuff. Can I just bring it in to all of me? And then all of a sudden, we embody all of it. And when we embody all of it, oh, my gosh, right? We, we, there's so much deeper level of compassion and integration. And then we are able to be more of service, whether it's you have children you're taking care of, students, um, community, clients, um, patients, you know, um, each other as friends. So... 
yeah, it, it, it projection happens. It happens, um, but it usually, again, the source of is disconnection. And the person receiving the projection, you know, when we're on the receiving end, we can tend to get very defensive or feel attacked or really misunderstood or really wounded and hurt. And, and sometimes when that happens, we want to throw it back. And that's called projective identification. When you identify and then you react back. When we can have, when we are more connected on a daily basis, we can, we might have a human feeling of like, whoa, what's that, you know, but we can quickly get ourselves back to center and realize, okay, that person is obviously suffering. This has nothing to do with me. So I can't, I'm not going to play ball here. I'm going to either wish them well and show them the door, or I'm going to engage them. If there's someone in my life, I really want to work through this and stop and be like, what's going on? Is the, I don't, you know, the root, where is, where is this coming from? You know, what are you afraid of? What's, you know, what, you know, help Those me, help, help us understand. questions are so beautiful because Marcy, that was so beautifully stated. And so to summarize, it's the compassion in the moment and for you to really know, and I break the word compassion into compass and mm-hmm. passion so mm-hmm. when your compass, when you know who you are and you're lit up and on fire, and this is something that I've learned over time, how to be lit up and on fire and to know what I want or what I require moment to moment, that's my internal compass and passion mm-hmm. being on. And you said that so beautifully. So when, when I know, and if Greg and I are going through something and he has, but he's like, it's such a funny story the other night our son was hurt I heard this primal cry within myself like Mm. I heard him calling out for mama and it was uh, amazing because I saw with my mind's eye what happened to him Mm -hmm. and Greg and I were on the dance floor and we were dancing we were at a family gathering party and I knew in that moment, my internal compass is set to this, to my community, to my kids, to my husband, to the, and I said, I stomped off and he grabbed me and said, where are you going? And I just, I said again, just in a harsh word, um, like I used, pardon my French word and, um, walked off and he had no reference for it. He didn't know. And I knew I needed to get to my son right Mm -hmm. then in that moment. And I found my son. I took him to the car. We worked on him and we healed what was happening for him. Mm -hmm. And, um, his first words to me was mom, you know, like, with words, he started sharing his dreams. My son shared his dream and Mm. he knew to connect with me to stay connected with his dream. Cause Mm. that's the, uh, the other day he tells a friend, my mom's a soul doctor. (laughs) The the neighbor, neighbor kids are over playing in our house, ping pong, the whole thing. And they're like, and they, I put them through a little process to connect them with their own hearts and forgive Mm. themselves in the projection work they were doing. It was really, really fun and funny. Mm. And Mm. the kids, these 10 year old boys, 11 year old boys walking off go, who's your mom? What? Because I I cut to it right there. My son turns around and he goes, she's a soul doctor. Oh, God. That's so cute. uh, That's so so spot on. uh, And it's it's so beautiful because I heard it right there. Mm -hmm. And I knew in that moment I wanted to get my compass was on. My passion is on. I know who I am. And I also know how I fit. And so Mm -hmm. Miracle Makers, one of the most important things that you can do is really get centered with yourself, knowing who you are, the internal compass based on what, what lights you up, what you love to create, what brings you back to life. And I know, um, see mama was birthed Marcy for you because it brought such a beautiful want of yours to life um, I, I'm so grateful that I was there at one of the first events for See Mama and the first like understanding of what it is and what it brings to the world. For those miracle makers that don't know what See Mama is, could you explain how this was born and what it does? 
Yes, yes, of course. And and I'm going to we'll connect this to connectivity and all of that stuff yes. because it's all, you know, so I it, it was born out of my own experience. So many of our the things that come through us um we're living, we're living through it, right? And so I like many women assumed and wanted children and that wasn't my destiny. You know, I had relationship, I was focused on other things, relationships um it took me until I was 40 to actually try to have a child with with um, someone I was very much in love with, and um, at the time, and I and it didn't happen, and so I had to walk through the, you know, the grief process uh, of that, and in doing so, I was just thinking of all the people in my world, looking at the massive amount of women and men, but I was focused on the female experience at the time who wanted children didn't have them this generation of women that by choice or circumstance didn't have kids but i was really tuning into the, those those of us who wanted children and it didn't happen and um and looking at my client's experience my my dissertation was on the experience of never married women between the ages of th 29 and 39 that desire marriage and children and then fast forward you know i'm past the fertility years and again this theme comes up on the other side looking at it from the community, the First Tuesday LA community, and how many women are there, you know, with that predicament. And so I started realizing, wow, we are, we are, we are a demographic now. And it's worldwide, of course. And really, from a place of compassion for myself and others, wanting to, like, can we just crack this one open and start to, talk, you know, acknowledge us and talk about this? And so created a platform called childlessmothersconnect.com. The idea is that there's the mother in every woman, and this was a this is a, a a forum online where whether people want kids or not they can they can of course share their experience stories triumphs um, and um, and 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 challenges and um, and then it started to download this this idea that there's 153 million orphans in the world. Mm. There's all these children that like they, they talk about disconnection. They, you know, they have not had a home. They have not had someone to love them. They have not had a champion, even if they don't formally adopt, just someone in their life to say, you are a priority in my life and I care and love you and I want the best for you and I'm going to be here to help support you in one way or the other. And so then it was like, well, hello, how about matchmaking to, to, to the idea of bringing together the concept of these two populations? Um, and again, it didn't have to be you know, formal adoption. There's lots of ways to connect with children. You know, they can foster, you can host, you can mentor, you can sponsor. So that's how See Mama was born. That's it came from my own experience. And and by the way, let me just say back, back to connectivity. If I hadn't connected to my own personal pain around this, it never would have happened. Hmm. So And it's such a beautiful organization that serves the mamas and the children and is a platform which wherever you are, if you want to help kids, whether you have children, whether you don't, it winds up being a way in which to give. To, um, it, that old saying, it takes a village to raise a child. And right. I love that you said you connected to yourself. Mm -hmm. You really connected and you noticed the pain and you went through layers of it. First, you went out there and you did the research and you're like, there's a lot of women like this. And then you were out uh, really healing yourself from the perspective of looking at it through this lens until it fully landed with you so beautifully to be able to give fire and passion to this when it came you wrote studies on it you wrote a paper on it you wrote and then it, from that passion this work came into the world yes yes you know the gandhi saying my life is my message yes. and so all of us when we're talk about miracles, I mean, I think everything's a miracle at the end of the day, but you know, really it's when we're, it's usually when that whole, and that, that beautiful, also the saying, you know, I think it was Goethe when at the point of commitment, the universe conspires to assist, you know? Yes. And so, um, it's really about 
trusting ourselves and trusting our experience. And when I first did the first video of See Mama, I was just, I mean, I was talking about the vision. It was very, very big. And all, and a lot of pieces of that vision have not happened. And they might ne never happen. But the point of, for all of us is to just go with it, to just go with where we feel called, you know, and see mama will, will evolve and morph into thing, uh, probably things move moving forward. Um, also, we have to give ourselves room for that, right? Um, if we get too attached to the blueprint and the rigidity yes. of, of the blueprint, then we can miss a few things along the way that, that are part of the miracle, right? So, so yes, it's been, it's been a really beautiful journey and we've been able to be a part of families who are actually choosing to adopt and these families are adopting older children and special needs children, and we've been able to provide them some financial support and be a part of their journey, and they've been a part of ours. And, of course, we have our um, volunteerism trips. One is that's coming up, actually, back to Peru in, at the end of May and early June. I would love for you to talk about that in just a second. Maybe what's coming up for you as you're hearing all of this? Well, you know, it's a different journey for a man, and so it's – um, I, and I have – I haven't really looked into it or explored it myself because I've been on a different path. But obviously, mm -hmm. it's there is. Um, I have just you know my life was transformed by our children, and it still is you know so deeply transformed, even with this experience we've been having recently. Yeah. It's just so it's like I'm like you know I don't know what, how to even you know to put myself in the other shoes. But I'm so glad that you're, you're exploring that because, as you say, there's so many people. We have so many friends in Los Angeles yeah. who have been on a journey, and then that didn't include children. And, I, and they I really are had... the biggest part of our community. Yeah, they, truly, they truly. They came over, and they did healing for our son. They yeah. brought Arnica, and they brought things, uh, and they sent healing. It was amazing. People that haven't had children yeah. that include our children as part of they're the village. They call yes. them uncle and auntie or yes. aunt. And um, I really want to connect this to that every pa every step, that every moment, Miracle Makers, is a miracle. And when you learn to listen to what's happening with yourself and notice the signs around you, you're really able to fully engage with life. And um, there's this great book, This it's called Psychogeography uh, um, mm -hmm. by Will Self and Stedman. Um, the, uh, it's a illustrated book, it's uh, beautiful, and it talks about a hundred different stories and the experience of different people geographically. What happens to us when we travel to places? Um, um, Peru is an ancient place. I haven't been yet. And if I didn't have, um, I can't wait to go on a trip to Peru. I'd love to go with you, Marcy. Come at on, some, baby. <laughs> at some Come point, on. we we love taking people to Egypt. And we're so grateful that we have this understanding of the land in mm. Peru, in Egypt, you have your senses come alive. These ancient places mm -hmm. that have been built, these people that are connected to the land that yes. guide you, the information yes. that becomes available inside yourself, your internal compass and your internal passion find a meeting place when they're in a land or in an experience that you've never been part of before. Yes. Y your senses are fully alive and the earth and the experience and the people become the wind beneath your wings. So Marcy, talk about your trip a little bit. Yeah. Well, first of all, I, I, I hear everything you just shared and I, and I absolutely agree, you know, particularly in our Western culture, we, you know, talk about again, back to connectivity. We can, we are so disconnected on, 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 on a, as a collective to the earth. We really are in this. And, and of course, technology has not helped. Um, and you do go to these places, Peru, you know, the Pachamama, the, the connection to mother earth. And it takes a while. It takes a few it takes a while to kind of get into the groove because it feels very foreign originally, you know, in, in, you know, initially. And then all of a sudden you kind of exhale into it and you remember <laughs> where <laughs> we all came from anyway. And um, it's beautiful. Yeah. This, so the idea of the Simama journeys is to integrate the seeing the sacred sites 
and being in that zone and having some time for self, for, for, for getting out of the bubble and getting out of the gerbil wheel of what we know is familiar. And uh, there can be so many, so much healing and inspiration in that place. Um, and then also connecting, we, we look at, you know, we, we look for a local orphanage that where we can connect with the children and, and what we don't go in with any agenda, but just to connect. And, you know, there's, there've been some, um, controversies over volunteerism trips. Does it do more harm than good? Do the kids get attached and then you're leaving again and all of that? But, you know, my view on this is that these children live in their own bubble too. And so the more access and exposure they can have to loving people on earth that come, that speak a different lang language and might wear different kind of clothes and have a different lifestyle. When, when they can connect with heart to heart, they realize, wow, there's a big wide world out here. And um, I think that's very, very, very nourishing. Not, not to mention the fact that there's lots of potential to stay connected. Again, everything from formal adoption when it's when it's possible we're not an adoption agency but someone if they wanted to pursue that they could look into that to hosting bringing a child here to visit um to sponsoring to going back to visit to to, to writing and staying so there's lots of ways to uh, that's to, so you know, beautiful hurt. marcy we're yeah. we're running um our time is coming yes. to an end we've got about a minute left. yes okay well, um what are the dates that you're going to peru yeah so it's may 31st to june 9th Beautiful. And, and and we would love, we are right in the zone of welcoming people into this journey. Um, and so all they have to do is email me, um, Marcy, M-A-R-C-Y, at cmama.org, C-M-O-M-A.org. Awesome. And we are going to put that on our, um, in the links on yes. the show. And Marcy, we're just so, so grateful. We're, we want everyone to know about you we want everyone miracle makers share this video um like this video the more of this that we can share the more resources we can bring to you and the see mama is a resource to connect those uh, that would want to travel to peru would want to be in service to orphanages that want to connect just a deeper understanding of the child, the childlessness connection, mm -hmm. whatever that is for you. If there is something that, ha go ahead, Marcy. Oh, excuse me. I also, also want to say there are some people coming with kids. You know, we, we set it up to be like people without kids and kids in need, but really we're not turning anyone away. If, if anyone feels called to say, I want to be there, absolutely. They're Welcome. And I'll also send the link to the actual invitation with all the details to you all if you okay, want. Okay, awesome. We we'll would that. love that. And okay, uh, Miracle Makers, I know you guys already know about coming to Egypt as well. We'd love for you guys to be in the pyramids. We are going April 14th to the 28th and we travel like the pharaohs. We do the inner work and the outer work to connect us to the symbols and what's living within us from that time period. And mm. so, Marcy, mm. thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Marcy. Thank you, thank you. Gra thank you both oh. so much. <laughs> Yay. What a delight and privilege to be to be with you. Thank you very, very much. And to all listening, much love. Much love. Baby, anything you want to end on? I just love you, Miracle Makers. Thank you for joining us today. We love you. Thank you for all you do. And thank you for sharing this. And we will see you guys soon. <laughs> is history, the future mystery, this moment is the gift, every second.